everyone, it's Gina, and today we're gonna to be talking all about how to apply self-tanner. I'm gonna break it down in really simple, easy to follow steps because I know a lot of people struggle with how to properly apply self-tanner at home. I'm also gonna share with you my before and after results using the Sun Goddess Sunless Tanning Mousse in Very Dark. I've tried a ton of self-tanners, and this one currently is my favorite, and I have found that it works the best for me at the moment. I tried so many different ones, and this one definitely gets me the darkest. It's streak-free, it lasts the longest, and it fades the most evenly. So that's the one I'm gonna be using for today. So let's go ahead and get started. So step one is to prep your skin and remove any old self-tanner. I do this routine every single week on Friday night. I usually start with taking a nice hot bubble bath because I like to soak my skin. That's really gonna help soften the skin and make it a little bit easier to remove that old self-tanner or your dead skin cells. You can take a shower too, but I just like taking a bath. I usually do some Epsom salt. I make it really relaxing. And this is usually when I exfoliate and shave. One of my number one tips for exfoliating is to use an exfoliating washcloth like this. I found this at Walmart years ago and I've tried to repurchase them since and they never work as good as this one. So I will try to find it online, maybe on Amazon for you. You. but this just has like a scratchy material it's like a mesh I don't know if it's like a dishcloth or what it's meant to be the other side is a regular washcloth I just keep washing this and I keep using it because I love it so much and it's held up really nicely anything that's pretty scratchy I prefer this I've tried other things like exfoliating sponges I've tried loofahs I've tried body scrubs and this just works the best it's the only thing that can really get rid of that old self tanner and get rid of the dead skin cells because you want to make sure your skin is completely smooth and doesn't have any rough patches because the self tanner is really going to cling to that so that's extremely important you want to remove your self tanner too once a week you don't want to just let your old self tanner fade because it can still have some left over and that can lead to splotchiness and stuff so you want to make sure you get it all off with this the body wash that i use to remove it with is just this one from cetaphil this is the ultra gentle body wash fragrance free i would avoid using any body wash that has any oils anything like really thick butters um, because you don't want to have any oil residue left over in your skin. You want your skin to be completely clean. So you want to make sure you exfoliate your hands really well, your elbows, knees, and your feet because those are areas that tend to really have self tan or cling to them and they can look darker than the rest of your body. So next step is to shave. I always shave my legs and under my arms before I apply self tanner because it just helps everything go on a lot smoother. You don't want the tanner to cling to any little hairs that you have. Um, you don't have to do this though, but I definitely highly recommend it because it just makes for a nice base. And I don't like to shave after I've applied self tanner if you're someone that likes to shave every single day you might be removing some of your self tanner on your legs when you're shaving because self tanner obviously is coloring the top layer of your skin so as your skin goes through its cycle where it's flaking off when you're shaving you're going to be removing that color so I usually only shave once a week it doesn't bother me that's just kind of my routine so I always shave before my self tanner I don't usually shave with self tanner on so once I get out of the bath I like to let my skin sit for a little bit you know how when your skin feels like a little bit sticky after you get out of the bath you feel really warm and stuff I like to wait a little bit and that's to let the pores on my legs close up now a lot of people might think that your pores actually don't open and close but I've noticed a difference if I go straight in with self tanner I get little dots all over my legs which is so annoying so to prep your skin for self tanner you want to first apply a thick butter or a lotion to any areas that might get darker like your hands and your feet and your elbows I like the Cetaphil moisturizing cream this is a thick body cream Cream. I highly recommend this. I apply this to my feet. I apply it to my knees, my elbows, and my hands, sometimes even like under my arms. If I don't want the color to show up darker on my armpits, just any areas. I'm doing this to create a barrier in the areas where I don't want the self tanner to overdevelop and get darker. And it's also moisturizing the areas so they're not too dry for self tanner, but it just helps create that barrier. And you still get color there. This isn't going to prevent these areas from getting tan. Like I still definitely get tan on my hands and my feet, but it just helps it not be so dark. So usually I would do this without any clothes on, but obviously I'm wearing a robe for the video. It's just easier that way. And I love the Sun Goddess mitts because they're actually lined on the inside. So your palms are not gonna get color on them. That's super annoying with other mitts that I've tried is the color seeps right through and sometimes you still have to wear gloves underneath. This you don't have to wear gloves with at all and that makes it so much easier when you're applying self tanner to your hand because you can just switch it off and move to the other side. So I highly recommend these mitts. I like how they're velvet material too. They're not like a sponge. 
so they're super soft on your skin and just apply the self tanner perfectly. So I usually start by applying my self tanner from the bottom up. So I usually start with my legs. So I'm first gonna pump, I usually do two pumps per section or sometimes three if it's like on my thighs where I have a lot more area to cover, I do like three or four. And I just work in circular motions. This self tanner does not streak. It doesn't build up in different areas. I've done videos in the past with the lotion from Sun Goddess and that one is just harder to apply in my opinion and it can stick in different areas and kind of build up. Um, but this mousse is just the best texture to wear. It looks so even on your skin. And then when I get down to my feet, I don't pump anymore. I just use whatever's left over on the mitt to go down over top my feet. You don't wanna apply any extra to your hands and your feet because that's just gonna be too much. You just wanna use whatever's left over, just a really light area. And I do go all over my entire foot because I have applied that barrier cream beforehand so it's not gonna get too dark. So then I work my way up my leg. Like I said, I do a few more pumps on my thigh area. So now I'm just gonna do the other leg, same deal, just work in sections and you want to blend quickly because you don't want it to dry. But I don't find that this dries too fast and it doesn't leave me too sticky for too long, which is really nice. So from there, I usually move on to my stomach and then I work my way up to my chest. So I like to start from the bottom up because if you started on your arms and you work down, you might get sweaty, you might get creases in your arms if you're applying your self tanner on the top half first and then going down. So I like to start from the bottom up. So now I'm gonna show you how I apply it to my chest. Same deal, I like to take it all the way up to my neck and behind my ears. And I'm also gonna show you how to self tan your back. And a lot of people always have questions about this. When you use a mousse in this mitt, it's so easy to apply it to your back. I usually just start off by applying it to the back of my shoulders and behind my neck like normal, just by reaching around. And then the little trick that I have is to actually flip the mitt around to the back of your hand, or you don't have to flip it around, just apply the self tanner to the back of your hand. That way when you reach around, you're actually able to use the back of your hand to reach the very center of your back. This is if you don't have someone obviously to do it for you or to help you. I usually never ask someone to do it because I find that I can do it myself. I'm not that flexible either and it's just easy to do it this way. As long as you can reach behind your back, just use the back of your hand to blend it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I've never noticed any streaks or weird areas on my back before and I've always applied it this way. It really comes out being even, especially with the mousse formula, it's really easy to blend. But if I had a lotion that was like sticky or hard to blend, this probably wouldn't work as well and it would require a lot more like rubbing and blending. But the mousse formula just glides on and it just comes out so even afterwards. And then I usually reach around this way with the other hand to get the back of my shoulder and to bring it down. And then I'll just take the same hand on the same side and I'll just do my lower back and that's really easy to do. But the main trick, flipping it around, applying that self tanner to the back of your hand and it makes it really easy to reach the center of your back because I can pretty much reach the entire center of my back with the back of my hand right here. And I do that on both sides too. So one hand can reach the opposite side, the other hand can reach the other side. So now moving on to my arms, I usually do one or two pumps on each section. So I usually apply my self tanner in sections. So I do from my shoulder to my elbow and then from my elbow down to my hand. So when it comes to my hands, I just like to take whatever is left over just like I did on my feet and go right over my hands. You wanna make sure you get in between your fingers, get on your thumb. You don't wanna take it onto your palm. You just wanna lightly blend it up onto your wrist. I'm gonna show you a trick in just a minute to avoid that weird self tanner wrist that a lot of people get with self tanner. As you can see, I don't have that at all. Mine looks really good after it's developed and I'm gonna show you how to get it that way. So now that I am completely done, I'm gonna actually go in and do another coat. You don't have to do this, but I'm gonna show you how to get really, really dark with this, which is usually with doing three coats. So what I like to do is apply two coats at a time to make sure I've gotten everything really good. But with self tanner, I mean, you can apply a little bit more and you might get a little bit darker. You can only get but so dark with your skin tone and some people get a lot darker than other people. It really depends on the makeup of your skin, but I just like to apply two layers right away. I don't always do this like in the winter. I just do one just to make it quick, but in the summer, I usually do two at a time. So by the time I'm finished with my whole body, it's usually dry enough to where I can go in and do a whole nother layer. So now that we're finished, I'm gonna show you the trick on how to actually prevent areas from getting too dark. So I'm just gonna take a washcloth and apply a little bit of water to this. I'm not soaking it. I'm just getting it a little bit damp. And I'm gonna use this to go over any areas like the top of my big toe always gets really dark, my knees. I do this on my elbows as well. And this is just to remove any excess tanner. I'm actually removing that color, but I don't end up with a straight up like white area. I don't completely remove it. I'm just kind of dabbing 
the damp cloth on it. So that's just removing any excess that makes the world of difference. If I ever forget to do this, I can definitely tell where it looks bad. So this is essential. I do my elbows. I try to get those really good. As you can see, um, the finished result, my elbows don't look bad at all because I actually removed that excess. So another one of my biggest tips, like I said, is to go over your wrists like this. You just wanna dab that area, especially right here. The texture of your palms that's a lot smoother tends to really cling to color and will turn really orange. So you wanna make sure that you remove any self tanner that might have gotten up on your palms. And I don't find that I have a harsh line here either. It just looks really natural and nice because I took my mint and I kind of blended it up. I also blended it up over the edge of um, my thumb right here but then I just kind of dabbed that excess. So I still have color there, it's still tan, but it doesn't look weird and orangey. Same deal with my hands. You just wanna take your washcloth and dab over your knuckles, especially this large knuckle here and in this front one on my pointer finger and my thumb, those tend to get really dark. The knuckles on my fingers, both the bottom and the top one, because those will have color cling to them. And it makes such a difference. As you can see, my hands look really good after they're developed and I don't have any weird splotchiness. And I did go in between my fingers too, but as you can see, everything looks good and even. So now that I'm done with touching up any areas that might get darker, I'm just gonna walk around like this for a few minutes and just let myself dry. And then I recommend putting on very loose clothing. I forgot to mention, I usually do this at night. So I will usually do this maybe an hour before I go to bed so I can dry off really good. I'll just wear really loose clothing. I'll wear like loose pajama shorts and a big loose t-shirt. You don't wanna wear anything like a cami like this that's gonna make lines because you will wake up with white lines here from your straps. Don't wear a bra or anything. Just let yourself kind of dry before you get into bed. This self tanner does not stain my sheets. It does rub off on my sheets. So I usually will just put an extra sheet down. That way I can just take that sheet off the next day and wash it. Um, and I don't have to actually change my sheet. So I'll usually lay like a towel down or a sheet. I like using a sheet because it's more comfortable than having a towel underneath. This self tanner does have a color guard, which is nice because you can see where you're applying it but it's not that dark. Like I wouldn't wear this out during the day with the color guard still on. I'm gonna explain how you have to rinse it off, but I don't recommend wearing this out. It's not dark to where it's gonna give you that instant color. It just looks a little bit dark on your skin. Once it starts to set up, you see more of the color, um, but the formula actually looks kind of green, which is what's gonna help counteract any oranginess. So if you notice it looks green, that's why. It's in order to counteract any oranginess. So the next morning when I wake up, that's when you're going to actually shower and rinse off the color guard. You don't wanna wear this all day because it's gonna come off on your clothes if you still have that color guard on. You don't have a bad smell, but it still has a little bit of a self tanner smell, but overall it smells pretty good. So in the morning, I just shower like normal. You don't wanna scrub or anything. I usually use that same body wash on a loofah and that just lightly you know, goes over everything to where I'm rinsing off that color and you're left with a nice, beautiful tan. So in the the morning you get out of the shower you want to apply lotion this is going to help maintain your tan make it last a lot longer this is the Cetaphil daily advanced lotion with shea butter this is just a daily lotion it's not too thick it doesn't have any oils or anything that are going to break down the tanner over time it's just a great overall lotion that keeps your skin moisturized if you have that barrier on your skin from the outside world it's going to help it to not get as dry because if your skin gets dry it's going to flake off a lot sooner and your tan's going to come off with it i did want to mention if you do want to get darker and you want to apply a second coat, you can either apply a second coat before you wash off that color guard. So if you wanted to apply a second coat the next morning, um, if you're gonna be staying home, I wouldn't do this if you're gonna be putting on clothes because you wouldn't want that color guard to rub off on your clothes. Or another option for applying a second coat the next day is rinse off that color guard the next morning, but don't apply your lotion because again, this is like a barrier. You wouldn't wanna apply your lotion if you're gonna be doing a second coat the next night. So that's what I do sometimes. I'll just wash off the color guard, go about my day with my clothes on, and then that night I'll apply a second coat of this and that's gonna help me get even darker. So the more times you apply this, you're gonna get even darker. But like I said, up to a certain point, you can't really get much darker, it's just your skin. So this is my results with three coats. So what I did was I applied two coats like in the evening when I was just staying home and then before bed, I applied my third coat after those coats had already developed and I just went right in and applied more. I didn't rinse anything off. Um, I did apply a little bit more cream to my hands and stuff before I went in and applied another coat. And I did the same process where I dab off the excess with the cloth and everything. 
um, and that's how I got to where I'm pretty dark right now. But on a regular week, I just will do two coats, but if I'm really trying to get dark, like if I'm gonna be at the beach or at the pool, I'll do three coats in a row. So I believe that is all the steps. So usually I can get about seven or eight days out of this tan, um, which is actually a long time of looking good because a lot of self tanners only look good for like three days. Um, and I do work out in it, I shower every day. Sometimes I shower every other, it just depends but I usually shower every day and I'm just really gentle in the shower. I don't take extremely long hot showers. I don't usually take a bath either after I've applied self tanner because if you're soaking your skin, it's gonna start to come off. Um, some other tips that I have is I always wear gloves when I wash dishes. I just have like cleaning gloves that I slip on because anytime you're soaking your hands or anything in hot water for a long time, it's gonna start to rub off your tan. But overall it stays on pretty well for me and I don't have any trouble with it fading in weird areas. So I'm gonna have a summary of these steps on the blog post that goes with this video and I'll have a little graphic that explains it a little bit better. I'm also gonna link you to where you can get all these products. If you do wanna get the Sun Goddess one, I'll have the link for it down below. I do have a coupon code for 10% off. I really recommend it because it's an affordable self tanner. You get about seven fluid ounces, so it's quite a bit. This this will last me a while and I like the very dark shade but they do have other shades if you have really fair skin and you don't want to get as dark you could get some of the lighter shades but I highly recommend the mousse formula they have other formulas like a spray and a lotion but this one is definitely my favorite so if you have any self tanning tips definitely leave them down below so you can help everyone else out if you want to see my before and after pictures those will also be on the blog so you can see how dark that I got and my skin is pretty fair initially so this is pretty good color for me with just three coats so that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching if you're new to my channel I hope that you subscribe before you leave here I do videos all about practical easy achieve makeup looks I do some curly hair care videos like curly hair care for beginners and also some home stuff like organization and farmhouse tours so thank you all so much for watching I'll talk to my next video bye everyone